My name is Steve Grant. I'm a product manager with Trimble. And today we're going to be talking about this HX220 and some technology we have on it and some, some technology that will be available to you all in the future. So just to start off, I just want to do a quick machine walk around just to point out a few components. And then really we'll look at the display, look at the software, and then open it up to any questions that you guys might have. So just to start out, I'd like to point out on the dog bone over there, you may see an enclosure, gray enclosure. Up on the stick, there's a yellow enclosure. And then back here, you might be able to see there's a yellow enclosure there. Does anybody have any ideas of what might be under those enclosures? Very good. So those are our IMU, or our inertial measurement unit sensors. Essentially think of them as grade sensors. Those are effectively outputting angles, and we've measured the system up, so we always know where the cutting edge of the teeth are, because that's what the operator cares about when he's digging, of where those teeth are to hit that desired grade. So when we get this system, we have to shoot all of the pins and all of the points of those sensors to tell us that geometry. We're then able to get down to those teeth. And I've, almost every session I've, I've had guys ask me if we can adjust to account for tooth wear, and we absolutely can. So if you're working in rock or in hard soil, where you're gonna start wearing down those teeth, and if you don't adjust that tooth wear, you're gonna receive poor, poor accuracy or poor guidance. So the operator can easily adjust that setting in the software to account for tooth wear. Each one of those sensors is full 3D. You're gonna get a full 3D readout from each sensor going back into the... Uh Good question. So, so the sensors are, we call them, we call these sensors six axis. Okay. So we do have six axis, they're 100 hertz. So they're outputting essentially 100 times a second. So they're extremely accurate, ex extremely precise. And then the display here, I wanna quickly show you and then we'll, we'll get into it a little, bit, a little bit more. But you guys see when we first launched the application, it's actually saying, Hyundai Construction Equipment Trimble Earthworks. So we've included your logo on there. The colors are unique to Hyundai. So other Trimble Earthworks users will have just the generic aftermarket system, whereas your customers, when ordered through the factory, will actually have the unique Hyundai branding, which is really cool. Another component that you're not able to see, it's mounted under the belly pan under here, is the EC520. It's our ECM and body sensor. So ECM meaning essentially it's the computer of the system. It's running all of the processing. It's listening to all the sensors and doing all the calculations, all the math, and then that's outputting it to the display that's running the user interface. It's also an, an IMU as well. And the, the body sensor will tell us the roll, the pitch, and the yaw of the chassis. So combining that information with the boom, the stick, and the bucket sensor, we can accurately get you down to your cutting edge, to the teeth. So we're accounting for all the variables, all the math is being calculated. Some other features that we can add on as well is right now we're just working with a standard boom stick bucket. We do have support for tilt buckets. So if your customers have tilting buckets, Tilt rotators, we also support a number of manufacturers and models to do both tilting and rotating. We do also, the last thing I'll mention is we do have support for a submersible kit. So right now, all of our sensors out on the arm, they, they aren't submersible, but we do have an additional submersible kit, similarly in the $1,000 to $2,000 range, that will put those sensors in aluminum housing, pressurized, and you will be able to... Absolutely, you nailed it. So right now these are water resistant, but they are not submersible. But if your customer is looking to work in a pond or, or any, any sort of water application, if he has a long reach, we can accommodate that as well. The other components I wanna talk about are the two yellow masts and receivers on the back of the excavator on the counterweight. So those are our GNSS receivers or GPS receivers. And how these work is these GNSS receivers are talking to the satellites up in the sky. Just them alone talking, they're getting an accuracy anywhere of 50 feet to 100 feet, which to be honest, isn't very good. And we call that autonomous GPS. And how we correct that or how we, how we get that down to sub centimeter down to the cutting edge is we need a correction source. And our correction source is on the yellow tripod back there is a base station. 
So that's another GNSS receiver that's talking to the same satellites. The only difference between the base station and the machine is the machine is moving around, it's mobile, whereas the base station is set up on a fixed known location. So it's listening to the same satellites and the satellites are bouncing it around saying you're all over the place. But then that receiver is smart enough to say, no, I'm actually on this known point and it's gonna suck back that error and then transmit that correction to the machine to then bring in its accuracy to that sub-centimeter range. So it's the same principle as a base rover system in surveying. Exactly. Think of the machine as the rover. The machine is roving around the site working off of the base station. And just so you guys know how GPS works with the base station, I can run as many instruments off of that base station as I want. I could have there's no limit to the number you can run off of. There's no limit. I could have a hundred machines and fifty surveyors working off of that base station as long as they are in range. And that range is typically within two miles, I believe. You can get repeaters and extenders, but you can you can run a lot of equipment off of a single base station. Now, if we talk about laser systems or a, a total station, a UTS, those are one-to-one. -one. So if we, it's one device to one machine, whereas GPS, think of as one-to-many, one base station, many machines. And the, the component that's receiving those corrections, you can see on the back is that yellow box up on the top of the cab. That's our radio, our 900 megahertz radio, which is talking to the base station, receiving those corrections. And then the ECM, the EC520 under, under there is doing all the processing of all that sensor data input to then display to the operator in the cab.